But if that's what you're really getting held back from with future events like this, specifically Worlds, I know people, including myself, uh, that ended up in the green with this event. Because, again, you can buy a bunch of exclusive merch and resell it. Uh, and the event staff get exclusive promos and cards and the competitors get exclusive merch and cards. And you can buy and sell them during the event and make money. It's very common. It's been a common thing for as long as I know to uh, really be able to pay for these events you take in Pokemon by kind of buying and flipping at the event all the exclusive merch. Listen, the cards that you're just jealous you weren't at Worlds. No, no one's jealous about some people going to Worlds. This is kind of goofy to watch someone hold six available cards right here and sell them for a thousand fucking dollars each. That's what's kind of goofy, but hey, is it scalping? That's up to you. You decide, good people of the internet. You decide if, the, if that's scalping or not to you. I have my own opinion. You let me know yours. And decide they shall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Mimic Brew video, a drama video. I am no stranger to drama videos, I will say this, however, this is probably the most nervous. I usually have zero nerves when it comes to all the videos that I upload, even the drama videos. I am so, like, I have so much conviction behind my drama videos that I almost don't even care what people think. However, this video... I'm going to bring up so many different content creators, content creators that I actually like, uh, that I respect, that I either know personally or have talked to a lot. Um, over the last year, I'm someone who has been exceptionally fortunate to meet a lot of these people, to travel, to just in a very short amount of time, the amount of content creators or just more or less big wigs in the Pokemon TCG hobby that I have met um, I am exceptionally grateful for. I have tons of friends in this hobby. Um, you know, for a guy with only 2,000 something subs, it feels like I've met basically everyone. Like, the only person I can even think of off the top of my head would be like real breaking Nate. I mean, that's just randomly we haven't crossed paths. Okay. So, for this video, we are going to be talking about a possum bud, Nicholas. We're going to be talking about a rattle Pokemon and talk about Pokey Chloe. Talk about Shiny Vert and CTR. These are all people that I genuinely really, really like a lot. And for this video, you know, not tons of editing. In fact, I'm going to do no editing. You don't see me in the Mimic Brew costume. This is a serious video. You know, no crazy intro. You're not going to see a Twilight Masquerade T Rex eating a shrouded fable dude on a toilet like my last video, okay? This is serious. I am going to give a genuine take on. Some of the more, well, the most recent, today, yesterday's drama, as well as touch on some drama that you can't even find on the internet anymore. There's some poke investor drama that happened last week that's literally been erased from the internet. Um, and then I'll follow up on my last drama video involving J-Love and the CT scanning machines. So basically, I am going to talk about a lot of stuff that would require a lot of skating on thin ice. And, but the thing is, I feel very genuine about these people, my, my thoughts on them and their place in the hobby. And so I'm just basically going to give you guys an uncut, unfiltered, no music, no cut-ins, no crazy editing like I usually do. Not even, again, wearing the Mimic Brew thing. I just want to talk about all this pokey drama, pokey content creator drama that's been going on lately. Mostly the pokey Chloe stuff. And yeah, and once I'm done, I'm done. So however long this goes, this is how it's going to go. Um, so yeah, other than we are going to look at a video, a clip from a year ago that was posted directly immediately after Pokemon Worlds Japan that I think will provide a lot of insight um, related to scalping and whether, you know, let's put it this way, Pokey Chloe is not the first person to do this. And there are other content creators just last year who were very upfront about selling stuff while at Worlds and helping pay for the trip, yada, yada, yada. And that person, extremely well-respected well, uh, content creator, has way more connections than me and just about anyone in this hobby. You know, no one gave him any shit for saying what he said or doing what he did. 
and Pokey Chloe literally is just doing the exact same thing. And he himself last year in Japan learned about doing this from a bunch of other people that do it every year. So what Pokey Chloe did is something people have been doing for years upon years upon years, okay? So I'm going to play a clip of that as well from a year ago. Okay, so I guess let's just get right into it. Let's get into Opossum Bud. I'm going to give you my take on this Opossum Bud situation as it relates to Pokey Chloe and Rattle. And there, there's two things. There's Opossum Bud and Rattle, and then there's Opossum Bud and Pokey Chloe, and then there's kind of the uh, all three. And then Shiny Vert, okay? Nathaniel dipped his toes in the water and he got bit by a great white shark, so... Some people just aren't cut out for drama videos, and they should try not to make drama videos, Nathaniel. Okay, so first of all, Opossum Bud. Opossum Bud over the last few days released two videos, um, more or less about the same thing. One was more or less a follow-up video. And what he discussed in the beginning of the first video ended up becoming the thing everybody was talking about immediately, which is Pokey Chloe selling staff world's championship promo cards for essentially a thousand dollars or best offer on ebay like the same day she got them essentially okay so the problem is it's a possum bud of everyone on the freaking internet who doesn't do giveaways probably has the most active comment section you can possibly imagine don't be surprised if he gets three to four hundred or more comments per video and he does not do giveaways okay so one thing i will say to opossum bud if you're watching this one thing to remember and to take very seriously is even if you are not choosing sides or saying directly where you stand on a situation that you are you know proposing to the community i mean you say yourself you're a trendsetter and when you start a trend and you don't necessarily say which side of the fence you're on you're putting your viewers, you're putting your highly active commentators in the comment section in any position to where they themselves are now the ones who are choosing and need to choose. Sorry, Zelda's making some noise in the background. Okay, so what I'm saying is just because you didn't call Pokey Chloe a scalper, you kind of put hundreds or potentially thousands of people in position to decide whether or not if she is a scalper. And now we have two videos that, between the two of them, have about 700 total comments of Opossum Buds. We have a Rattle Pokemon video from this morning that it itself is coming up to 400 comments. We have a Shiny Vert follow-up copycat video of what Opossum Bud made gone horribly wrong that has several hundred comments. So, so what I'm saying is... Even though a possum bud didn't necessarily choose or say how he himself feels about the situation, aka a you know a fairly very well a very well respected very popular content creator scalping promo staff cards for a thousand dollars, he may have not himself called her a scammer, but he proposed the question to his audience. And, you know, a thousand comments later between one, two, three, four different videos, the, the, it just, the comment section takes on a life of its own. And if there's one content creator that people, they don't just watch his video, that they watch the video and then they, as soon as they're done with the video, they scroll through the comment section. If there's one content creator that a large majority of people do that with, it's a possum bud. A possum bud's comment section are extremely lively, extremely full of very good takes. Other content creators are always commenting. I'm always commenting. Um, and then it's also full of some of the worst, you know, dodo bird brain takes, just complete toxicity is there as well. And people know he doesn't erase comments. So if you don't erase comments, people see that as green light to say whatever the hell they want. So, okay. Even though he didn't choose sides, in a matter of 48 hours, over a thousand other people between four different videos have, okay? And amongst those thousands of comments between Opossum Bud's two videos, between Rattle's video and Shiny Vert's video, the amount of toxicity, the amount of name calling, the amount of, you know, whether it be saying to Radar, you know, you're just a simp for Chloe or you're a Chloe simp, you're a hypocrite, 
you know, God, you simp so hard, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, about a possum, maybe like, dude, just, you know, start shit, blah, 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 doesn't check his sources. It's just so much negativity where everyone's choosing a side and giving their take. But all of it leads to just a negative stain on YouTube, on this week, on worlds, on everything. And nobody really, truly wins. Like Pokey Chloe, her reputation is now tarnished. Uh, even though no one has a clue how much she paid for, her, no one has a clue how much, you know, just going to Hawaii from the UK. You're talking hotels, you're talking plane trips, you're, you're talking car rentals. Like, just imagine how much it probably costs to go to Hawaii just on a, on a regular weekend, okay? From wherever you live, like say you live in the US or UK, it costs a shit ton of money. Now imagine going to Hawaii during one of the biggest events of the year, the biggest Pokemon TCG event. The point is, it doesn't matter who you are, it's gonna cost a shit ton of money, okay? That's just the way it is. And so to pose a question, is she a scalper? Um, word on the street is, she got it for $100. Word on the street is, she's 10X selling them. What I'm getting at is if you don't know, you don't know, and if there's a clear as day history of content creators doing this, that has even been that we're going to watch in a sec, you know, like it, if one of my viewers brought it to me and was like, hey, look at this screenshot, Pokey Chloe's da da da. Well, because I watch YouTube and because I pay attention, I would be like, okay, well, that guy did it last year and no one cared. And he said everyone does it all the time. So I guess it is what it is, you know, uh, maybe a possum bud it's irrelevant to a possum whether he saw that video or not. And here's another big critique I'm going to say about the whole opossum bud situation is it's his overall thesis of, I just, you know, want some fairness and equality. If this is scam, if this is uh, scalping, then, then why isn't this considered scalping too? I just think, you know, it's messed up that certain people get hated on for scalping, but then when content creators, do it, it's not a big deal, or it's totally fine. So first of all, I think throwing all forms of scalping into one kind of one bag, one lump sum and saying all forms of scalping are exactly the same um, is really misleading and and kind of like, I don't know, generic, it's just way too easy. And let me give you an example. So the people like, let's say the locals that live in Hawaii, I mean, these are the people, it's probably locals who are sitting on the asphalt on their ass on the curb selling this shit 150 feet outside the double doors going into the auditorium that has the Pokemon Center in Hawaii, right? So if people in Hawaii are reselling ukuleles, backpacks, whatever merch, 100 feet outside of the store, and it's sold out in the store, that is genuinely no different from a scalper at a baseball game or the scalper at a football game who like, there's the ticket booth, you wanna go buy tickets, oh, it's all sold out. And then you turn around and there's a dude at the street corner who has 10 tickets in his hand selling them for double. And you're like, well, what the fuck? I could, could have just gone right there and bought them for, for face value, for market value. But instead I have to go to this asshole scalper 10 feet behind me at the street corner to pay for my tickets. So selling a ukulele, selling a backpack, selling all that world's merch, 20 feet outside the fucking door on the ground sitting your ass on the on the asphalt with a blanket with all your shit and be like oh sorry it's sold out back there but you can buy it here for 200 dollars. like that's like the worst form of scalping that's dirty that does suck there are people actually in hawaii that went to hawaii and they can't do shit about it because it's sold out because pokemon center didn't limit items per person per type of item or whatever the hell that's a dirty scummy version of scamming and it's no different from what you see with tickets and sporting events okay now to take that and put it in the same basket as someone taking a staff promo and listing it on ebay a website that everyone across the world can freaking access okay and then also putting or best offer i think that's kind of a good point is look once you put something online you're listing it online for what the online market that day dictates that it's worth now, if someone buys it for that price and it goes down in value, you know, I'm not someone who feels bad for someone that's that naive to spend that much money on a product or a card that year in and year out, that 
you can see year in and year out. You could do your own research before you drop five hundred or thousand dollars on a car and you card, and you can be like, look, last year's World Championship promo was worth this much the weekend of Worlds, but then a month or two later it went down. So a smart person isn't gonna pay a thousand dollars for that staff promo card. And if they do and it goes down, well, guess what? They just learned one hell of a life lesson as it relates to Pokemon and collectibles in general. Anyone that pays $1,000, $900, whatever, for a staff promo card the weekend of the event, and they get bit in the ass because it goes down in value later, I'm sorry. I, you know, we're all adults here, okay? Like, you don't have to feel bad for that person. You don't have to feel like Pokey Chloe totally screwed them over. They needed to have it now, so they paid a massive premium for it. And there is tons of examples all across the internet on every price charting website, TCG player, where they could have easily realized that they were probably making a bad decision by paying that high of an inflated price for that promo on that weekend when it's the most popular it's ever been. Okay? So... If someone wants to pay that price, good for them. And historically, people always will because some people just love to burn their own money. Okay? So, is it a bad look that Chloe did it? Well, yeah, just from the standpoint that her actual eBay says Pokey Chloe, so it's super easy from some random viewer to connect the dots and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. But to assume the amount of shit that has been assumed, like how much she paid for it, or Shiny Vert saying she got a trip all the way to freaking Hawaii for free. You think at Worlds, Pokemon Company, look, they probably like love Pokey Chloe as much as the next person. They ain't paying her fucking plane ticket. Like, yes, they have a ton of money. That shit costs a ton of money. If they paid for every random creator who has more than 50,000 subs to come hang out, and that's it, not even do work, like, that. that's just, that's not realistic. That's not what happened. So content creators... Tell you what, let's get into the video right now that I was going to tell you about because this, again, this guy got no shit whatsoever when he did this. To be honest, like, let's just do this. There's just a, a ton of people going to this event, a good core group of guys that I was, I am close with that, um, you know, I, I'd be okay with going to this event and just hanging out with and not seeing the Pokemon stuff. But, uh, but yeah, let's, let's kind of jump into it from from the start right i mean this was an expensive trip uh you know a lot of people can't afford this it is something that radar. i just met him two weeks um, ago i am lucky Very enough to be able to there. to uh have the extra extra uh, uh funds to make something like this happen however if that's really what you're getting held back from uh <clears throat> excuse me i'm sick but if that's what you're really getting held back from with future events like this, specifically Worlds, I know people, including myself, uh, that ended up in the green with this event. Because, again, you can buy a bunch of exclusive merch and resell it. Uh, and the event staff get exclusive promos and cards and the competitors get exclusive merch and cards. And you can buy and sell them during the event and make money. It's very common. It's been a common thing for as long as I know to uh, really be able to pay for these events you take in Pokemon by kind of buying and flipping at the event all the exclusive merch. So if you're worried about expenses in the future for this type of stuff, take the time to learn about how this works. I'm sure you might have a friend that went to the event or know someone who went to the event and ask them, how, how does all this buying and selling work? How are you paying for these trips? And sure, it's, it's a stressful thing for a lot of people to not have the certainty of the trip getting paid for. I would not recommend going if you can't afford it, but this is a possibility. You can buy stuff there, sell it, and essentially get a free trip. Uh, I mean, we'll get into the amount of money I spent. I spent more money than I ever could imagine uh, spending, not just in a weekend, but in a year uh on on stuff uh that you know for personal collection so it it's a very doable thing to do these pokemon trips really anywhere these pokemon world of championships anywhere um and have them paid for by just doing a little bit of business during the trip but the flight for me was 
uh, direct from Dallas so there you go. to I flew into Narita, which no. All right, so there you go. That's Pokemon Radar. That's essentially a year ago today, right after Worlds Japan. He posted a video, and that is literally in the first like ten minutes of his hour and a half long little podcast video that he does. But right then and there, the man is telling you he is a major content creator with tons of connections. Did Pokemon pay for his flight trip to Japan? No, of course not. Even he you know, had to look into ways to save money to kind of fund his trip, to get creative, and there you go. He literally sold so much merch while he was there at Worlds that he said he was in the green. Did anybody make videos about him? Did anyone, you know, pose it as, is this good? Is this bad? You know, why are we giving people that sell shit on the, on the cement, on the corner shit, but we're not giving radar shit, right? None of that. None of that whatsoever. So... I'm not saying there's a double standard. I'm just saying, let that be the proof you need that content creators of all shapes and sizes, genders, account sizes, you know, bank account sizes, people have been doing this for years upon years upon years. Like he learned from someone who probably learned from someone who learned from someone. Pokey Chloe learned this from someone. Okay. So in that, in radar, like I said, I just met the man like two weeks ago. He's a very stand-up dude. I think Radar has one of the most interesting uh, Pokemon car- content creation journeys. Just five years ago, the man was 90 pounds soaking wet, and he was on death's door, and he was still making Pokemon card YouTube videos, and now he's just a strapping, healthy glass of water. So there you go. So thank you, Radar, for that. And I just brought up that radar video just as a perspective that Pokey Chloe is by no means the first, nor will she be the last person to scalp promos or merch the same day, the same weekend of Worlds, because people are that willing to pay outrageous amounts of money. And again, if they are overpaying, this is not a once in a millennium type thing. This is a once a year thing. If you don't realize that you're overpaying for this stuff when you're paying for it the week that it's happening you, you, well you're, you're, you're gonna learn like you just, <laughs> like i'm just saying like i don't think we should feel bad for ignorant people that spend too much on collectibles at their height like anyone who bought van gogh pikachu you know for 200 to 300 dollars you know the first week or whatever or maybe even more than that and then now it's sitting at 90 bucks. Like, do you really feel bad for that person for spending that much on Van Gogh Pikachu? Or you're like, oh, he should have probably known better. Hmm. Like, come on, right? Like, we are a, pretty much all of us are adults here. And we all have to be financially responsible ourselves. And if a promo is listed online and you think it's too much, then don't buy it. Wait a month or two. Okay. It, it's that simple. Okay. Grown adults need to be accountable for their own bank accounts and the things that they do. And equating selling merch, you know, 10 feet outside of the door on the curb to listing a staff promo on eBay for at best offer, I, I think that's that's just not, no. Like, I think there are, scalping is such a general fucking term. It's like, does it even matter what what truly is scalping? There's things that are a worse look than other things. Selling shit on the street corner for quadruple right outside where someone could have gotten at retail to me looks way, way, way worse than listing an exclusive promo card on eBay with an at or best offer, you know, available. So does this mean I'm simping hard for Pokey Chloe? I'm a Pokey Chloe simp? I hope not. Um, I'm just someone who happens to know that Radar has already talked about all this stuff and apparently it's a very prevalent thing. And it's been normalized to help people pay for these very expensive trips. Okay. So again, to possum bud, just because you don't choose what side of the fence you're on, that doesn't mean you're not the one that's literally building the fence. Okay. And essentially you are making it. So all these people, all these comments are jumping over one side of the fence or the other and making it known why. And it does lead to, of course, a shit ton of unnecessary toxicity. And it leads to people like Shiny Vert making asses of themselves because they're trying to get views on a on a drama video topic, okay? So, just something to consider. Nicholas Opossum Bud is just because you don't choose the side, you can sometimes put people in positions where they themselves have to choose the side. And then things 
spiral out of control from there. All right, so the Pokey Chloe, I think I pretty much covered the Pokey Chloe thing. Is it a bad look? Sure, it's not a great look, um, but it, it's she's just not even close to the first person to do this. And, you know, she probably did spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars for her whole team to go from the UK to Hawaii with all the hotels. And no, there's no way in hell a Pokemon paid for all her stuff like not any of it at all period pokemon's very stingy like I, people are thinking pokemon company is like super generous they're not all right so now i'm going to get into just a possum butt and rattle um remember when they used to be friends you know it i don't think it's ever a good thing when the avengers break up i don't think like you know the beatles break break up you like when you get people that have good intentions, um, but then they end up spending their time butting heads against each other, definitely it's not a good thing for anyone involved. It's not good for Rattle. It's not good for a possum. And again, it creates a scenario where people choose like, all right, well, I guess I have to be either an opossum bud fan or I have to be a Rattle fan. Um, in my opinion, they both have their place. They both, you know, it's, it's YouTube, you know, and it's Pokemon. They're the scammers, the rattle Pokemon, he may have slipped up over the last few months. I think he's gotten highly distracted by the, uh, the Sean Bassett crap, um, you know, and it's led to him maybe having more sleepless nights <laughs> than usual. I mean, I'll admit I'm not as big of a rattle fan as I used to be, um, but I still think he still has a seriously good place. Um, you know, I, I was off put by just how hard he focuses on his lawsuit and all that. Um, so I kind of fell off from watching his videos, but at the same time, I still respect him. Um, and he, he absolutely, you know, when he does a good job, he does a great job for sure. He just can be a little hypocritical from time to time. Uh, okay. So let's see. And a possum, I, possum, you know, he's still good in my book. I'm just literally saying sometimes, even though you're not the one saying what's up, you're creating a scenario where everyone else has to say what's up. And yeah, it creates way extra drama. Nathaniel, Shiny Vert, the things that Rattle said about Shiny Vert in his newest video from this morning, um, I, I really got to agree with. Um, there's a lot. Pokey Chloe responded in Shiny Vert's video in the comment section defending her own self. And Shiny Vert continued to poke the bear and like tell her to show receipts for how much she paid. Pokey Chloe is under zero obligation to tell everyone how much she paid for those promos. Like, like i'm sorry like <laughs> if she and then people are saying show receipts like what the fuck are you talking about she didn't buy them at target okay there's a lot of people saying a lot of nonsensical things amongst several videos all about these four content creators hating on them or loving them or hating on them or vice versa contradicting points and it's all about something that's been happening for years okay a way bigger deal is the CT scanning stuff that everyone's probably already done talking about, okay? Like, that's way bigger deal than some staff promos going for what the market's willing to pay for them to we the week of Worlds. It just is, all right? Also, in that Rattle video, okay, I'm going to talk about Cool Trainer Ryan a little bit. <clears throat> At the end of this Rattle video, Rattle mentioned some stuff some pretty shitty stuff about some cool trainer ryan mods one of them i couldn't give a shit less about and i don't even like the guy and you know screw him what the fuck ever uh the other one um i actually think maybe she you know is a great person who just put her foot in her mouth and said something stupid i don't know um but pretty much everyone in this new rattle video almost everyone except for the one guy I just mentioned, I, I do care about a lot and I think highly of. And so a lot of the stuff that was said in this Rattle video was very disheartening and kind of sad to see, especially at the end of the video. So Ryan, I know you're not going to watch this. Um, you know, you might want to have a little CTR powwow with everyone who works under you for free or not and just kind of set the record and expectations straight moving forward because as dirty as your discord is and as degenerate as things get you do have to draw a line somewhere and you know this um and so you might have some difficult decisions to make related to personnel because there are some forms of degeneracy there are some things that can be said whether in comment sections or discords that are just simply put 
going way too far, especially when you encroach on racism, okay? So CTR, get your little house put together, you know, clear that shit out and make sure shit like that doesn't continue to happen because shit like that's just going to drag you down, all right? So there's that, and if you want to know more about that, watch the rattle video, okay? So let's see. So as far as Pokey Chloe and the most recent stuff, that's all I have to say about it. So if you're if that's all you're here for, I would leave now, because now I'm just gonna get into some drama that happened last week that no one's talking about, because every shred of evidence related to it has been removed from the internet, and so some investor bro drama, okay? So again, we're done with Pokey Chloe. Sure, it's not the greatest look ever, but again, she's one of a million content creators to do this, okay? But last week, I don't know if you know this, there was a Rob Does Pokemon video called Nostalgia Nomics Can't Read. Thousands upon thousands of views for the 24 hours that it was up. There was a Nostalgia Nomics uh, reply video thousands of views before it disappeared and there was an original nostalgianomics video from a week before that which is basically a hit job amongst all other uh investor bros basically where nostalgianomics said i am the messiah i am here for you all the other investor bros don't know how to read charts the problem is for a majority of that video nostalgianomics was looking at light play charts he was literally looking at Sword and Shield alt arts, and he was looking at charts showing them go up rather than the near mint charts that everyone else is looking at where they're all clearly going down. So he made an absolute idiot of himself. Rob, who was one of the people targeted in that video, made a video called Nostalgianomics Can't Read. I fucking loved it, and it breaks my heart that it is now unavailable and ceases to exist. It, I have never seen Alex do a response video where he just straight up admitted, I fucked up, I was wrong, several times. Nostalgianomics does have the ability to say, I fucked up. I've seen it with my own eyes. If you didn't see it, I'm sorry that they all they erased the video. Anyway, that was very interesting for those people that did see that. Um, the fact that two content creators can recognize that they both got into some drama... That in just in general is bad for both of them. And then to just decide, hey, man to man, just letting you know, I'm going to erase the video, do with you what you want with your video. Um, and then everything, you know, the next day is gone. I think that's okay. I think that's fine. Because even though, yeah, it was a pretty interesting couple of videos and some pretty, in, in, you know, interesting investor bro drama, they weren't proud of the way it made them look. They they weren't proud of the message it was sending you know to the community and they just made it so people who are going to watch it down the road who don't have the context who may only see one video or the two they made it so people that can now you know spawn opinions about these two well they can't now because all the evidence is gone and the only thing that would have came from that is more and more negativity more and more people choosing sides you know being a dick in comment sections so there's that okay Believe it or not, there was a crazy investor bro drama. Let's call it the light play charts drama, and it doesn't exist anymore. Just like the Dave Chappelle Lost episodes. All right, we're going long, so I'm just going to follow up to my OK J Love last video drama where OK J Love, I basically articulated to you that he is way too, way too excited about CT scanning, is way too favorable of it, and is most likely talking to the uh, industrial inspection company on a daily basis, what it seems like. Since that video, since around that time, I believe that OK J Love has kind of figured it out and he realized associating with these people, associating with this topic and viewing it as a positive thing is not a good look at all. And I haven't heard a peep out of OK J Love since two or three weeks ago regarding any of the CT scanning. So even though I was very harsh on him, um, at the time of the video, it seems like he kind of got the, not because of me, but just his own his own audience, he kind of got the message like, I should probably distance myself from this whole CT scanning company and, and crap. It's not a good look. So good on you, J-Love. And also, J-Love, um, congratulations on your new baby. I saw that. So, okay, J-Love is now a father. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got. I just wanted to say, again, that like what Pokey Chloe did is not... 
something new at all in a possum bud again just because you're not choosing sides doesn't mean you're not putting thousands of other people in a position to choose sides okay and that's almost worse um and then yeah and i, I still think rattle's a good dude you know he just needs to get back on the rails and get back to the way he used to and dot his eyes cross his t's shiny vert dude just chill off just chill just just chill just stop it like i don't know what to say every time you do a drama video things are a little off i'm just saying i love you nathaniel but there's enough drama channels just chill and then yeah and then ctr you know just clean up your shit as far as the people around you and yeah that's all i got i'll be back uh with this week's hottest cards on the next one all right guys like comment and subscribe deuces Mimic crew is goaded. Mimic crew is indeed goaded. 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 Mimic crew, I like your takes, bro.